This video should be called a crime against an agent. 50 times a week I talk on the phone with you and other agents regarding this issue of required recruiting in order to advance. Many claim they ask and were told that they can advance to the top contracts with zero recruiting. And you see, here's the problem. I know the answer on all the IMOs and the compensation plans because I have them all, I've studied them all, and I make it my business to know them and be able to discuss them with full knowledge with the folks that call me asking for my help or my advice in breaking down the different comp plans that are offered to them in joining this industry. Hi, my name is Steve Houston. I just want to say welcome to my channel. If you're brand new here, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up. Make me a comment below so I know you're getting some value out of the videos and out of this channel. Much appreciated. And for those of you who are not brand new and are current subscribers, as you know, I'm very grateful to have your support and to engage in each and every one of you many times throughout the week. Stay tuned to the end of this video, even though it may not apply to you, because I'm coming to Portland and we're doing a meetup. So all of you that's in the Portland area, within four or five hours drive, I'm going to give you a VIP ticket so that you and I can meet in person to discuss this industry, the opportunities, and what options you should be considering as you make 2020 your breakout year. So let's pause for a second. I'm going to put the Portland event on the screen. Take a look, and in the description, there'll be a link to get your VIP ticket. So here's the deal. When I hear that from an agent, I get so frustrated because I've asked all of you to make sure that you don't take a recruiter's word for it. And the reason is they have a reason to lie to you or to distort the truth or just plain out, ignore the truth or leave certain things out so you don't find them out. So you sign up with them and then they lock you into the contract. The bottom line is they'll do whatever they can in most cases to get you to sign their onboarding contract. Many of them, to be quite honest with you, are brand new themselves, naive and don't know the truth. They're only repeating what their upline told them. So you have to make sure you ask them to send you their printed promotion guidelines so you can review it for yourself and also ask them to show you that you can get promoted based only on your own production to a top contract without turning into an Amway recruiter. <laughs> That's the point, right? Again, I'm not against agency building. I've obviously been doing that most of my life. What I'm against is forcing you to do something you don't want to do or it's not in the right timing for you, and then to penalize your own personal production and capping your income because you're not ready to do what they're ordering you to do. So I've taken some painstaking time again, and I know we've covered this several times, so hopefully this message will get through. Share this video out if you do me a favor to people that might be in this situation, that might be with IMO number one, so we can get the word out. So let's go take a look at the whiteboard and I'll show you what you should be looking for and the key things that are warning signs when you're looking at these promotion guidelines. I've got on the board here two IMOs, IMO number one and IMO number two. I'm just taking my screen over here to make sure you can see those things. So typical of an IMO that's more MLM or network marketing, they tend to start you out very low. They give you a progressive comp plan so that it appears that you can scale up the comp plan to a top contract based on your personal production. But you got to read the fine print. So IMO number one starts you out at 60%, right? That's where you're starting at. So the next stop on the comp plan is 65%. Pull your promotion guidelines out right now if you have them and see if this compares to what you currently are on. 65% is $7,500, not written, but issue paid. In other words, applications that you've written that have been approved and the policies have been put in place. The next level is 70%, $10,000 worth of APV issue paid. APV, for those of you who are new, stands for annualized premium volume. You take the monthly premium that the client's paying, multiply it by 12, and you get this annual premium volume. So in the industry, the average for a long time for a mortgage station application has been a thousand bucks or $85 a month. So that means you're writing about 10 policies a month to hit the $10,000 mark. The next level is 75%, which is 15,000. So honor about 15 policies per month. 
The next level is 80%. Now you're writing about 25 policies per month. And I have a line here because this is IMO number one that many of us know as being a, a massively organized recruit, 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 and don't get those three things out of order type of IMO. And I have it written down here, MLM. Now this is an area where many people get confused. Because they allow you to build your own organization doesn't make it MLM. What makes it an MLM or multi-level marketing or network marketing type is when they force you to recruit in order to advance. That's the difference, okay? One forces you, one allows you to if you choose to. Anybody has a farmer's or a state farm or a New York Life type agency, they all do the same thing. They hire agents to grow their agency. However, their agents are not forced to recruit to build their own agency in order to get the maximum contract. When you have an MLM type, you can't advance to the top of the contract. You're pushed down, you're held down, so the money flows to the upline recruiter. That's a network marketing type, and there's several of them out there, and I'm not gonna name names. You can kind of figure it out on your own. But the line here is, now the verbiage has changed. No longer is it just $7,500 worth of issue paid premium in order to advance on your own pen or your team, either one. Okay, now it's in order to go from 80 to 85%, you had to do $50,000 issue paid. Now in this situation, if even if you did $50,000 with your own pen, which is 50 applications per month, you cannot get that contract, right? You cannot be promoted to 85% in IMO number one because you need seven people writing $50,000 a month collectively. In other words, you and seven writers doing $50,000 a month, not each, but in total volume. In order to get advanced to 90%, to you need 75,000 and 11 writers in order to get promoted. See, none of this is allowing you to get promoted on your own production, which is capping your income, because you can't control what these folks do. You can only control what you can control, which is your own production. That's the problem. You and I can't motivate people off the couch and we can't get them off the couch if they don't want to get off the couch, right? It's their own business. And if they want to get off the couch and go do it, that's great. If they don't, they, then they don't. And this is also where you get the animosity built up between the recruiter and the agent because they're trying to kick you in the fanny, trying to get you to go out there and recruit even though you don't want to. You just want to go out and write some applications, make some part-time or full-time income, support your family, and if and when you're ready to, re to recruit and build your own agency, you'll do it in your own timing, right? They don't like that because they can't grow their agencies if you're not out there recruiting. And they got most of these people recruiting before you, they even get licensed. Well, you can't override income in any state in this country without an insurance license. So why in the world would they want you recruiting people before your license? It's simple, so you can make them money and they also know most people don't stick around, most people quit, and when you quit, your people that you recruited and brought to them, some of them might stay. So you've helped them grow their business. Some will, some won't, so what? You're gone and it's all to their advantage. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So now you have 90 to 95%, $100,000 worth of issue paid business and 15 writers. Next level, 100% is $150,000 and 23 writers. 110% is $225,000 in issued paid premium and 34 writers. 110% contract, which is at the top level of, of street contracts, is $350,000 with an issue paid business. 350 applications a month going through your business. You couldn't write 350 a month yourself. Well, I can't say you couldn't. You might be able to. It's highly unlikely and most people can't. But even if you could, it wouldn't matter because you still need 53 writers participating in this $350,000. Do you see what I'm talking about? This is total MLM type IMO contract. Compare it to the one that you have and see if it matches. So, all right, so let's take a look at IMO number two. At 70% contract is where you start, okay? About average. It's ahead, it's 10% higher than this one, okay? 
Same thing, you go from 70 to 75 with $7,500 worth of issue paid business, okay? Now over here, you go to 75% with 15,000. So now you're doing twice as much volume to get the same, same bump over here. So doing $7,500 in APV or seven, eight applications per month gets you to the 75% contract. Over here, you had to do $15,000 or 15 applications. 80% is $10,000 or average 10 applications a month. Over here, 80% is $25,000. Two and a half times. Okay, now you can go to 85%. There's nothing in here that says anything about having to have any additional riders. You go from 80 to 85% with 12,500. Okay, 85%, you can't get there. Because even if you could write $50,000 or 50 applications per month on your own, say you're a stellar salesman, you still need seven writers, okay, contributing to that business. Now, 90%, 15,000, 95%, 17,500, 100%, 20,000, 20 applications a month. That's very doable for even an average part-time agent. It's five applications a week, and as far as I'm concerned, in my agency, that's part-time activity. That's running about 10 to 12 appointments per week, writing five to eight applications, okay? Now, 105% is $25,000 or 25 applications. Again, very doable, okay, if you're a full-time agent. 110% is $30,000 worth of issue paid or 30 applications. And I have some of those agents on my team as well with no team, just writing that with their own personal production at the 110% contract rate. Over here, those agents would be quitting, right? As soon as you tell a good producer that they have to recruit in order to get to 110%, not only do they have to recruit, they have to do 225,000, they have to have 34 agents on their team contributing to that business, right? They're not going to stick around because what happens is they're already doing $30,000 a month, okay? But they're stuck at 80% in this IMO, which means they're giving up 30% of their income because they're not here. They're doing the work. They're buying the leads. They're putting the uniform on. They're going out every evening and on the weekends visiting families, kneecap and kneecap, they're right in the business. They even may be building their own agency and hiring people, but they can't control those folks to go out there and get the business done. They can only control themselves and their own activity. They're still doing the $30,000 a month, so they rightfully deserve to be at the 110%, but they're giving up 30% of their income because they don't have the numbers. They don't have the agents because they haven't been doing opportunity meetings. They haven't been drawing circles in their home, in their living room at night. They've been out there trying to protect families, sitting in their homes, writing up policies, and getting paid, supporting their family, and protecting the families they're sitting in front of, which is what we do as an agent, first and foremost. If you do that, you get paid very high commissions, and you're building residual income. The third equation is passive income by building an agency, but here's the thing. This part over here, as I said earlier, you can't control the results. You can only put in the activity, and no one knows when you'll be able to get this many agents to participate, right, and to qualify in the right business so that you can advance. Over here, I know what I have to do. It's all about lead flow and activity, which I control. And I can do that while I'm building my agency. But darn it, if I'm out there producing at a high level, even part-time, and I'm bringing the IMO, the value of the premium that I write, pay me what I'm worth. And when this happens, if it ever does, you can certainly pay me for doing this effort.
But today I'm doing this, and I expect to be paid for it. And the only reason why you won't advance me is you want to push me down or hold me down so more money flows to the upline. And here's the problem. Many of those uplines have never sold a single policy in their lives. They're strictly recruiters. They'll admit it if you ask them. You're their meal ticket. Now, each of us have to decide if that's okay with us. It's not okay with me. And the people that I talk to, 50 to 100 people a week, it's not okay with them either. That's why I spend so much time to make sure that this message gets out. Now let's continue. Now here's the deal. What you really want is both. One, to advance to a high contract up to 110% or higher based only on your personal production. Why? As I've said before multiple times in this video, because it's the only thing that you can control. You cannot control what others do, right? And you also want the ability to be promoted based on what your agents do if you're building your own agency and your personal production. That's really the only fair way. That's why I have written up here, fair and equitable comp plan. That's what all of us really want. So as we close this video out, I want to talk to you about a text I got just last week. An agent that had produced $225,000 in personal production and has only been allowed to be promoted to 80%. Imagine that. Okay? You know why? Because he doesn't have the agents on his team. So he's gone out and produced $225,000 in sales, 225 applications in the course of the year, and he's stuck at 80%. See, that's a crime in my opinion. See, I feel bad for that agent. That would never happen on my agency, and it would never happen in my IMO. See, I want our agents to be promoted. I want them to prosper. I want their families to prosper. It's a partnership. It is not a sign-up. So what is this costing this agent? Well, let's take a look at, well, we've already taken a look at IMO number one and IMO number two, right? What is this agent giving away to this recruiter? I've showed you one very aggressive MLM type IMO that many of you might be with. You've certainly heard of them where they start you out very, very low, 60% contract, right? And they only allow them to advance to 80%. Doesn't matter if you're a fantastic producer, you won't be allowed to advance. Criminal. There's no other reason for this. Again, like I said, except push your money to the upline and line their pockets with the cash that you earned. This applies to this agent that's done 225000 in personal production. He's with IMO number one. Right? That means this agent is averaging $18,750 a month and they're capped at 80%. So if this agent was in IMO number two, with that same production, nothing more, they're at 95%, which means 15% of their income is passing to that recruiter or that upline. And it's very likely that their upline is in a high contract at a minimum 100%, could be 105, could be 110. But at the very minimum, that recruiter is earning 15% or more off this agent's sales possibly for years while he's trying to build this up. Because again, with IMO number one, they can only advance if they build an agency of seven riders to begin with for three consecutive months doing $50,000 in issue paid business. And here's what they don't want you to know. The industry average is about 10% of the people you hire will ever get out of licensing and put their name on an application. And the next fact they don't want you to know is it's going to take you about 150 to 200 people that you personally recruit to get those seven to do that $50,000. How long is that going to take you? So if you're a rock star at recruiting and hire 10 a month, you're still looking at a year or more of this agent losing 15% of their monthly income. So based on an $18,750 a month, that means he or she is giving away $2,812.50. That's many people's mortgage payment. Look, you could drive a brand new Corvette and buy one for your wife and have money left over. <laughs> and, and my guess is that's exactly what that recruiter is doing with your 3,000 bucks. Times that by 12, your recruiter, even though they may be a nice person, is banking $34,000 a year off your efforts, which in of itself is not a bad thing if you're allowed the same opportunity to advance as you are 
in IMO number two. Because that, again, is in your total control. In other words, if you want a pay raise, you can get more leads, see more people, and write more business, and get yourself promoted. That's a fair and equitable comp plan. But what you cannot do, again, is force people to do what they don't want to do, and you shouldn't be trying. Look, at the end of the day, as I tell everyone, it's your decision. But you have to ask yourself the same thing I asked myself many years ago. Why? Why? When there are better options, would you allow this to happen to you? I hope this helps you decide, and I hope that you're in a place, look, it's January 2020. You still have time to make 2020 a prosperous year by making that decision now. Either way, set your sails in the direction of the wind and having your breakout year. The industry is prime, right? We're right where we need to be. As I indicated at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be in Portland in February, talking to many of you. If you want to be my guest, shoot me a text, send me an email, or call me, and I will get you a VIP ticket, and we can discuss all this in person. I really hope this impacted some of you today so you'll make a decision that benefits you. Don't worry about the upline. Don't worry about the recruiter. Do what's in your best interest. Just ask yourself the question and whatever you decide, I'm with you a thousand percent. I just want to make sure that you understand exactly where you are and that there are better options should you decide to make a move. And as I say on every video, the surest way to succeed is to be determined never to quit. Just make the right choice for you. Don't worry about anybody else. Be selfish in that regard because it's your career. We need you and I want you to succeed. I'll see you in Portland or I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.